Good evening folks. I meant to make this video this morning or this afternoon after the event had happened. <coughs> Excuse me, but um skin didn't get around to it. And to be fair, I was absolutely shattered. Because I've been up since like, you know, five o'clock this morning. And so I put my head down for a few hours. And what a what a what a great show. I mean it was a stacked card. I'll get to the main event in a minute. But the WBA flyweight title was defended. Uh, Sego Yuri Akui. If I'm fucking anybody's names up, I do apologise. I'm English. You know, Japanese names are very difficult for people like me. He successfully defended his title against Taku Kurahara. Good fight. Um, I, had, I had it 119-109. I only gave Kurahara one round. But two of the judges had it 117-111 and the other one had it 118-110. So not too far off how I had it. Yeah, great discipline from uh, Akui. He just, to me, he dominated it all with the what the right hand and the jab. <clears throat> and Kuwahara had his, his his moments in the fight, but I think I felt that um, Akui was pretty much in control throughout the whole thing. A good win for him. Good first title defense for him since he won it in January. So it's nice to see a champion who's been quite active because um, a lot of guys, because of all the money and everything. A lot of these guys, yeah, you're lucky if you see the champions fighting twice a year sometimes. So, yeah, I was very impressed with that. And then uh, the WBA bantamweight title, uh, Takuma Inoue, the younger brother of Naoa Inoue, he made a successful second defence of his uh, WBA title against Sho Ishida. He was dropped by Ishida in the first round from a jab, which uh, was quite surprising. And uh, Ishida, you know, he kind of celebrated a little bit once he drops him, he wasn't badly hurt. Um, in a way, he wasn't badly hurt. He just, um, it was just a perfect jab, just put him down. He wasn't, really, yeah, he looked the way he went down. I thought, oh, hello. But he got up, his eyes were clear, he was all right. And he proceeded to, I mean, he doesn't have the punching power of his brother. I know he knocked, he had a knockout win in his previous fight. I think it was his second defense of the, of the title. But no, he proceeded to. Worked so well on the inside, he was working the body, he was throwing uppercuts through in the middle, he bloodied uh, Ishida's nose. Very, very good performance. Uh, he took a unanimous decision. I had it at 118-109, as did two of the judges, and the other judge had it 116-111. So a little bit closer, because Ishida was working quite nicely on the inside himself. And because he had he was, he was had the longer arms, uh, he was he was throwing a lot of jabs um, down landing a lot of jabs and longer punches, but none. I think the sting had come out of him by that point. I think, uh, in a way, he was sort of, he, he was sort of teeing off on him a little bit and working the body and things like that. It was wonderful work on the inside. So I think that sapped a lot of the strength out of uh, Ishida. But no, oh, terribly sorry, excuse me. That was a good performance, really enjoyed that one. Co-main event. Jason Maloney defending his WBO bantamweight title against uh, Yoshiki Takai, the former kickboxer. Now I thought going into this one because this was Takai's, f I think it was his ninth professional fight. He won everything else by knockout. One of the the furthest he's been in was the eleventh. So I thought, well, Maloney's experienced. Um, he should either take this by you know a, a decision later on, or perhaps a late stoppage. Who knows. Um, but no, um, it was a good fight. Um, to K won. He took a unanimous decision. I had it 116-111, as did two of the judges. The other judge had it 117-110. Uh, to Kai, he was working the body very early on. But he at the same time, he was landing a few low blows, which led to... He was worn three times in the opening round, and I thought, oh, this could be a problem here. I mean, they weren't blatant low blows. They were kind of on the belt or just below the belt. They weren't what I would call horrendously low blows. And we've seen worse. Just look at the Riddick Bow, uh, Andrew Golotta fights, you know. But, you know, he was warned and he did it a few more times. In the second round, he had a point taken off. But he was working so well. He was catching um, Maloney coming in with um, left, straight lefts to the body. And he was smashing left hands through the guard. Um, you know, just uh, it, Maloney seemed to be a bit uh, reluctant to throw punches at times, which I thought was quite curious. I think he tasted the power because he obviously he's a knockout artist, is Takai. So I think Maloney had taken a he'd taken a few bit of his power and thought, mm, I don't know. I mean, all the way through because obviously the Japanese crowds are very quiet, which is is, is quite um, strange to see whether you watch 
um, Japanese sports or not. They're very quiet until something big happens. And you could hear Maloney's corner just screaming all the way through, use the jab, Jason, use the jab, work the body, work the right hand. And he was so reluctant. I mean, he had some success. Um, he really did. But, um, you know, he did, he'd snapped um, Takai's head back. I think it might have been in the seventh or eighth round, possibly the ninth, the, the round escapes me. But he did snap his head back, and I thought, oh, this is getting interesting. And he was catching him with jabs and things like that, but he just, Takai just seemed to have his number, if that makes sense. And, um, you know, he, obviously once they got past the 11th, that was the fur furthest Takai had ever been. So the last round was Maloney's, because Maloney was just going going all out. He was desperately trying to stop this kid. And, <clears throat> you know, he had him, he was out on his feet at one point towards the end of it. He, he was tired, you know. He couldn't do anything to move out of the way of the punches. Maloney was trying so hard to finish him, but Takai, Takai just, he survived. You know, he, he stayed on his feet and he's, he survived and he took the decision and he's now the WBO Bantamweight Champion. So um, Japan has yet another world champion, which is fantastic. I would imagine the move will be at some point is to put Takuma Inoue in with Takai in a big unification. That'll, that, you know, that, that'll look good. And plus you've got Junto Nakatani as well. He's got the WBC belt. So we've got these three orbiting around each other. Um, there's some good unifications to be made, all you know, which will sell tickets in Japan. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now, the main event. Naoya anyway, one of my favourite fighters, the undisputed super bantamweight champion, was facing the uh, public enemy number one in, in Japan, Luis Neri. Uh, now, he'd been out there previously and won the WBC Bantamweight title and things like that but he failed drug tests and you know, I, I hate drug cheats I know it was ruled the WBC ruled it that it was uh, due to the tainted meat in in uh, Mexico the you know, same defense we've heard from Canelo and other people so who am I to say whether or not it's true but I don't like um, I don't like drug cheats. I don't like people who come in overweight because he again he came in overweight before. Um, I don't know. I just didn't like the guy. You know he's exciting to watch and he, he can be destructive, but I don't like drug cheats. It was ruled that um, it was contained contaminated meat, so yeah, fair enough. That's that's how it was. Now I knew this would be a bit of a shootout, uh, but I, I always thought in a way would would get the victory in the first round. In a way, was dropped. A, straight, a counter left hand. He countered it uh, perfectly. Southpaw left hand, and it spun uh, in a way round, and he, he went down. It's the first time he's ever been on the floor in his career, professional career. And it reminded me the way he span round when he went when he got caught, caught with a punch. It reminded me of the Canelo Alvarez knockout of James Kirkland from years ago. And uh, I thought, oh, this would be interesting. He got up. In a way, got up. He he was clear clear headed, um, you know he was fine. When he came out um, of his corner to start the second round, he was waving his arms around to the crowd as if to sort of reassure them. No, I'm okay. Don't worry, I'm okay. And he went to work then. And in the fo following round, he dropped um, Neary with a, a left hook. Um, rounds three and four, he was just he was just battering uh, Lewis Neary every time Neary got close to him. You know, he was just unloading. He's so fast. His hand speed is so fast. And he's so accurate as well. He doesn't waste... Oh, excuse me. Terribly sorry about that. He doesn't waste punches. And and the power... You know, he's, he's got everything there. And Neary couldn't do anything with him. He was even taunting him at one point. It was, it was in a way. I mean, he was unloading him to the head and the body. And Neary was doing the, you know, the big boy thing. Oh, yeah, it doesn't hurt. And hitting his body and going, come on. You know they they were registering as soon as the fighter starts doing that. You know they're registering. And then in the sixth, um, beautiful combination. It was a right uppercut, and then seconds later, a straight right hand snapped uh, near his head down. He he went down against the ropes. He wasn't getting up. You know um, he previously um, dropped Neary again in the fifth with a left hook. You know he just couldn't miss the guy. And after that first round, it's like everything went out of uh, Luis Neary. He was just, yeah, he'd run out of ideas, basically. Um, 
fantastic fight, good knockout win. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what's next for Inouye. I mean, there's a couple of fights to be made down there. Casimiro, yeah, that's a name that, that's been thrown about. But no, really, really good fight. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was. I, I kind of thought to myself, I was talking to a friend of mine in Canada um, a couple of days ago, and I said, uh, I've got the feeling this, is going, this one's going to be a bit of a shootout. It's going to be a bit of a Hagler-Hearn situation. And it was. You know, not as It wasn't as back and forth as Hagler-Hearn, but the fact that he went down in the first round and he got up to drop Neary in the second and the fifth and then finished him in the sixth. You know, fantastic fight. Really, really enjoyable and uh, yeah, I, mean, I always like watching in a way. A lot of people shit on him. Um, a lot of Americans, like, in particular, seem to shit on him a lot. Oh, he doesn't do this. He doesn't fight black people. He doesn't fight Americans. And then he beat Stephen Fulton last year. You know, so as a black American, why why it matters about people's race, I don't know. But we live in twenty twenty four, where everyone's obsessed with race, and ethnicity, and skin color, and religion, and I don't get it. Sexuality. You know, it's an obsession <clears throat> that um, just irritates me because it's like if you're a fighter, right, I mean, I'm talking about boxing here. If you're a fighter, it doesn't matter where you're from. If you're good and you beat everybody, who gives a shit who it is, what color they were, or what ethnicity they were, or what religion they were, or where they're from? Now, yeah, you know, I've heard the argument he doesn't fight Americans. There aren't that many top Americans at at the lower weights. You know, there really aren't. And obviously, you know, he beat Fulton. He did a number on him last year and knocked him out. So. There you go. So shut the fuck up. But no, I really like Inouye. To me, he is one of the pound for pound best. And I'm interested to see where he goes. I'd like to see. I think he'll probably move up to featherweight at some point. Because there's some big fights for him to be had there. But I don't know how high up through the divisions he can go. Because obviously, because he's quite a small man anyway. That's why he fights at lower, lower, lower weight divisions. But no, great, great victory for him. I really enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you for listening to me. Um, I've got 131 subscribers, which again amazes me. I never thought I'd get one. This is, I just do this for my my own mental health. I started doing this nearly two years ago for my own mental health. I was in a very dark place, and boxing is my bright spot. As, although it makes me angry and pisses me off sometimes, it's it's my my bright spot. It, it it gives me something to focus on. It gives it gives me passion and a reason to get up in the morning. So. You know, the fact that anybody would like to listen to me ramble on about boxing just amazes me. So thank you very much for watching this. Thank you very much for supporting me. I hope you're all well and I'll speak to you soon.